Hey everybody, it's Will from The Bulwark. So we're now two weeks out from election day and millions of people are already voting. And there's a lot of noise going on, but there's really only one big thing you need to focus on. We are this close to re-electing a former president who is openly running as a fascist. Now that may sound like an exaggeration, but let me take you through some of the things Donald Trump is saying at his rallies. I'm gonna show you that he's promising or threatening to do exactly what fascist leaders have done in other countries, suspending civil liberties, executing people for nonviolent crimes, deploying the military against his opponents, and much more. Let's start with the most obvious thing. Three years ago, Trump sent a mob to the Capitol to overturn our last presidential election. He failed, but now he's saying that one of the first things he'll do if he's reelected is pardon and free people who were convicted of crimes for joining him in that insurrection. Here's what Trump said last month at a rally in Wisconsin. The moment we win, we will rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner unjustly victimized by the Harris regime, and I will sign their pardons on day one. I will sign it on day one. So Trump is telling us up front that he'll pick up right where he left off. He's going to celebrate the insurrection. That was a day of love. And he's going to protect his thugs. But one big thing has changed since Trump left office the Supreme Court has issued a ruling on presidential immunity against prosecution. And Trump believes that based on that ruling, he can tell the Justice Department to drop all of the indictments against him. Listen to what he said at a press conference in August. As you know, the Supreme Court ruled recently on immunity, and I'm immune from all of the stuff that they charged me with. So Trump basically believes that he can't be touched. And the next question is, what does he intend to do with the power he'll have as president? Well, two of the hallmarks of fascism are the suspension of civil liberties and the suppression of independent media. You might remember that two years ago, Trump explicitly called for, quote, the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. One of Trump's targets is the media, which he calls the enemy of the people. Here's what he said a month ago after ABC News, in his opinion, moderated his debate with Kamala Harris in a way that Trump felt was unfair. Uh, they're a news organization. They have to be licensed to do it. They ought to take away their license for the way they did that. That's the instinct of a fascist. Not just complaining about media bias, but declaring that the government should revoke the broadcaster's license. And then this month, Trump said the same thing about CBS because he claimed, wrongly, that 60 Minutes had unfairly doctored an interview with Harris. They should take that license away from CBS. In fact, Trump also wants to censor Fox News. Listen to what he said three weeks ago after Fox aired a speech by Harris about border security. And then I have to sit there and listen to her bullshit last night. And who puts it on Fox News? And they shouldn't be allowed to put it on. It's all lies. Again, that's the way a fascist thinks. I don't like it, so they shouldn't be allowed to put it on TV. But controlling the media is just the beginning of what Trump would do to free speech. For example, the Supreme Court ruled long ago that burning the American flag might be offensive, but it's protected by freedom of expression. So the government can't make it a crime. But Trump says he doesn't care. He refuses to accept the court's decision. We should give a one-year sentence in jail to anybody that burns the American flag. And they said it's unconstitutional to stop it. Like hell it is, okay? Like hell it is. It's not unconstitutional. And that one-year jail term is nothing compared to what Trump intends to do to people who sell drugs. He says he wants to do what China does. If you get charged with selling drugs, you get an immediate one-day trial, and then we kill you. 
Here's Trump a month ago describing a conversation he had with China's president, Xi Jinping. But before that, I had a great relationship. And I said, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. Oh, how come? Death penalty, immediate. I said, what does that mean, immediate? Immediate. We have what's called a quick trial. You know what a quick trial is? Like in one day, the trial is over. Over here, it'll be 25 years. And if you don't have the death penalty for drug dealers, you could, you're just wasting your time. In fact, why stop there? Trump also wants to execute people for entering the United States illegally. Several days ago, he was talking again about criminal migrants, which he didn't really explain how he knows which ones are criminals. And here's what he said he'll do to those migrants when he expels them from the United States. But if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. 10 years. And if that doesn't work, it'll be 20 years. And if that doesn't work, I guess it's going to be the death penalty, right? The death penalty. Now, you might say, okay, those ideas are pretty harsh, but they're just about crime. If Trump were a fascist, he'd be talking about things like jailing his political opponents. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what he's talking about. Now, to be fair, Trump himself is facing prosecution and he could end up going to jail. But the prosecutions of Trump have been conducted by the book, by prosecutors, defense lawyers, judges, juries, and grand juries. Trump's idea is that as president, he can personally arrange the imprisonment of his opponents. Listen to the way he talks about jailing his opponent in the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton, who has never been prosecuted much less convicted of any crime. And I could have done that to Hillary Clinton. I could have put her in jail. Let me show you a moment that really captures the way Trump thinks about his power to jail his enemies. It's from an interview last month with a friendly podcaster, Lex Friedman. Watch. If you become leader again, you will have unprecedented power. Just on your own personal psychology, what does that power do to you? Does it is there any threat of it corrupting how you see the world? No, I don't think so. Look, I've I've been there for four years. Uh, I could have done a big number on Hillary Clinton. I thought it looked terrible to take the president's wife and put her in prison. She's so lucky. I didn't do anything. She's so lucky. On the surface, Trump is saying, "Hey, give me credit. I didn't put her in jail." But the real message is what's underneath that. I could have done to her whatever I wanted, and I still could. And Hillary Clinton is just one name on a long list of people Trump is threatening. Another one is Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader. Here's what Trump said two months ago about Schumer's criticism of the Supreme Court. He frankly should have been put in jail or certainly spoken to very strongly. He got lucky. He got lucky. He had a couple of guys that didn't want to do it. And I understand that also. But he got lucky. There's that fascist mentality again. Schumer got lucky. And then last month, Trump issued a more general threat against people who criticized the Supreme Court. These people should be put in jail the way they talk about our judges and our justices, trying to get them to sway their vote sway their decision. Trump also says he'll prosecute anyone who, in his opinion, has cheated against him in an election. Remember, Trump thinks all kinds of people have cheated against him. Election officials, Democrats, journalists who say or write things that make him look bad. Here's what Trump said three weeks ago about those people. If we win and when we win, uh, we're going to prosecute people that cheat on this election. And if we can, we'll go back to the last one, too. That is a thinly veiled threat issued by a presidential candidate against any election official who doesn't do what he wants and against any news organization that publishes anything that might hurt him in the election. Now, you could argue that it's not fair to call Trump a fascist unless he also intends to use the military and police against his enemies. But that is exactly what he intends to do. Listen to what Trump said this weekend 
about his plan to deport people he claims are criminal migrants. And to expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs, I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. Can you believe that? We couldn't have an act like that now because now everything's woke, you know? We have woke generals like Milley and Mattis. We have woke people. They don't do things like this. So we had to go back to 1798 when we had real people running our country. The Alien Enemies Act of 70 gives us tremendous power to the president to do what's right. See, the problem with the military under Joe Biden, according to Trump, is that the generals don't have the stomach to do what needs to be done. In fact, Congress doesn't have the stomach either. That's why Trump says we couldn't pass a law like that today. But Trump does have the stomach. So he's going to take this law from 226 years ago, which gives, quote, tremendous power to the president. And he's going to use that law to send the military and whatever force he needs to round up and deport those migrants. Now, you might tell yourself, hey, those are foreigners. Trump wouldn't order a violent attack on Americans, would he? Actually, here's what he said three weeks ago about people who walk out of drugstores with what appears to be stolen merchandise. If you had one day, like one real rough, nasty day with the drugstores, as an example, where when they start walking out with, but they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day, like a guy like Mike Kelly put him in charge, one rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately. End immediately. And if you think Trump would only use the military and police against criminals, I got news for you. Trump is already proposing to deploy the military against a broad category of Americans he describes as the enemy within. And he includes in that category Democratic members of Congress. Check out what Trump said a week and a half ago on Fox News. The interviewer, Maria Bartiromo, asked him about the possibility that criminal migrants or foreign terrorists might disrupt voting on Election Day. Here's how Trump responded. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of Election Day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard, or if really necessary, by the military. Remember, the question was about foreigners. And Trump said, no, that's not the real threat. The real threat is the enemy within. And who exactly is the enemy within? Watch how Trump answered that question this weekend in another interview on Fox. That's an enemy from within. That's really, it, that is a threat to democracy. These are bad people. We have a lot of bad people. But when you look at Shifty Schiff and some of the others, uh, yeah, they are to me the enemy from within. I think Nancy Pelosi is an enemy from within. Adam Schiff, a Democratic congressman and former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House. Chuck Schumer, Hillary Clinton, the list goes on. Trump is talking about jailing them, deploying the army, authorizing one really violent day. And we've already seen him use violence to try to overturn an election and stay in power. Look, it's very clear what we're facing. Right now, this election is dead even. Trump is openly campaigning to impose fascism in the United States. If he wins, he will claim that he has a mandate to do exactly that. And we are on the brink of giving him that mandate. See you next time, I hope.